Hello, I'm Super Orange Cat, and Tanami might be in the worst position it's been in since it's come onto Adult Swim. Now, the big thing, the big headline here is the fact that Jason DeMarco on Ask FM last night more or less confirmed that the budget for Tanami had been slashed. And I just want to give some context, so I'm going to mention the question and his answer direct verbatim here. If that's the case, and new shows aren't available due to current delays, why not get something you've never aired from the past few years of older? Even if it's not new, it might be new to a lot of viewers, unless you still have the rights to Mob Psycho 100. And again, this is referring to the fact that reruns of Mob Psycho Season 1 will start airing this upcoming Saturday at 1 in the morning. And his answer was, we still have the rights to Mob Psycho 100. Our budget has been cut, understandably, due to financial losses resulting from the current, the current outbreak. Nothing cheaper than free. So basically, it's what a lot of people had suspected for a while about the decision to rerun Mob Psycho 100. A lot of people thought optimistically, like, oh, this is them building up to announcing that they got the rights to Season 2, finally. However, this is a lot like a Genlock situation. If you remember back last summer, when for some, when re some weird reason, Tanami picked up Genlock to air on the block, and it's simply because it's free. And that's the reason why they're airing it. You know, which really raises the question of, like, what shows do they still have the license to air and which ones they don't? And I think because they chose Mob Psycho 100, it kind of showed that it was probably the biggest name they still had left. Because, like, I already suspected, the fact they removed, say, The Promised Neverland mid-rerun indicated that they had instantaneously lost the rights to it. Same thing for Attack on Titan. They probably don't have the rights to air either of those shows anymore for the time being. Which makes things really ugly, because Attack on Titan is definitely a good uh, block stuffer. Like, you could probably start that from the beginning of the show again, throw that light in the block, and get ship it in, like, numbers with it. Which is, well, probably would have been the best case scenario here for Tanami, but that is not the case. Because we don't have Attack on Titan anymore on the block. And ultimately, yeah, that's just... I mean, this is the dire straight situation they're in right now. You have a few episodes left of your cash cow this season, My Hero Academia. Then you have a rerun in the Paranoia Agent, which, based on the first episode, really isn't pulling in that many people. Then you have another rerun in Mob Psycho 100, which... And its initial run really wasn't that much of a ratings darling. I think it just more or less met expectations when it first aired. It was nothing special. It didn't draw any new people to the block. It just more or less appeased the people who were already there. And then after that, you have Black Clover, which this is like the one real upside with Black Clover is it just left an arc that a lot of people kind of dislike in the fan base. And it's entering an arc which I've been told is a very good arc. So... Again, that's the only show right now, The Block, who I think their stock appeal is increasing right now. And then you have JoJo Golden Wind. JoJo's going to have its fans. They're going to be devout. But they're not honestly that large a number, especially, well, definitely with the ratings. They don't come to watch the Tsunami airings that much because JoJo is typically the lowest rated show of the night, premiere of the night, occasionally getting beat out by the Ship It In rerun, which airs after it, you know. And then they have Ship It In afterwards, which... I mean, it's just kind of a sturdy show. It's going to be here until late 2024, and there's nothing we can really do about it. So it's going to be there. So really, and that raises another thing. If you've been paying attention to week by week with Funimation and with My Hair Academia, you'll know that to this point, as of me recording this late Monday afternoon, May 4th, that there has not been an announcement yet about Funimation about when episode 86 will be completed and aired. And this, this is important because... My, because Tanami this past Saturday la aired the last completed dubbed episode that they had. So as of right now, if there is no new episode by Saturday, then Tanami is gonna by necessity have to find scramble for something. And by scramble for something, I'm fully expecting they'll either a rerun the first episode of season four, or b just simply rerun the episode that aired a couple nights ago. And that's just a bad situation for Tanami, regardless how you look at it. And if Funimation does deliver the episode on time, then it's going to be a very tight window because, again, we're about five days away from the new episode supposed to air, and we don't have it yet. So it's not really a good position for Tanami. And even best case scenario, each episode gets delivered on time. You only have three more episodes here for Tanami, and likely we're going to have another rerun replace My Hero Academia. More likely or not, they'll just rerun My Hero Academia. Hopefully, they'll just shift it to the back of the block this time and move. 
something that's airing new episodes, like a Black Clover to the front of the block. And this is the first time I'm ever going to say this. Black Clover should be the first show in the block. And it's not because of like me saying how good the show is or me saying they should do this ironically. I'm saying this is your best option right now. Paranoia Agent is a rerun. Mob Psycho is a rerun. My Hero will eventually be a rerun. Ship It In is basically a rerun. And then after that, you have Jojo Golden Wind, which, like established, is an esoteric show. It's not going to pull in a giant wide audience on a weekly basis, even if it has a very giant cult fan base. And it's been proven this with the fact that it hasn't pulled out great ratings. So again, you're going to have to throw Black Clover to the front of the block here, which is going to be hysterical considering, like I've mentioned, just when it first came on the block, the massive negative a negative attention it got is something that I think only Genlock has come to match to any degree on the block. And the fact that it has kind of come around, it really has built its fan base, and it has a pretty decently sized, devout fan base now, and most people are saying that the show is at least better than it used to be. I think it's time you throw it to the front of the block and see how things go. I think it can really, it really, I think, is comparable enough that it can appeal to a wide audience in a way that something like a My Hero Academia could, you know, and My Hero Academia's ratings show that it could, so I don't see why Black Clover necessarily can't, you know. Again, another thing to bring up here is just the fact that, I mean, yikes, I mean, you have to, like I said, within the next three weeks, you have to announce some replacement for My Hero Academia, but considering they have no money right now, it's, it's probably going to be My Hero Academia again. And again, Funimation being not giving much information about where we are for the dub on that show. And also stay tuned on Black Clover too, because I think they're only like eight weeks behind Funimation and where they are with Japan, assuming that Funimation dubs at a good pace. If things go on like this for like 15, 16 weeks, then we're going to have to find our place up for Black Clover 2. JoJo ends sometime in August. So really, we're going to have a position where we're going to have to replace five shows by the end of the summer here, you know. And if things aren't being dubbed again, if Toonami still has got these butt-cut budgets, then we might be facing something of a crisis scenario for the block. And I'm not going to say, oh, Toonami is over, this is the signal of the end, but this isn't good. This is a pretty ugly situation Toonami's in right now. And a lot of people keep talking about, but Jason DeMarco said that we have shows through 2023. That means that Toonami is confirmed for 2023. And I've been saying that doesn't confirm a single thing. Because this isn't, it isn't negotiated. These deals are negotiated where it's negotiated to Toonami. It's negotiated for William Street. It's negotiated for AT&T, Warner, Turner, whatever the name of this company is now. You know, because they keep changing, because they keep merging with different things. And if Toonami doesn't exist a year from now, it doesn't mean those shows are canceled. It just means that those shows will probably either be pushed to whatever streaming service that AT&T has a stake in, or at worst case scenario, will be some like late night block thing with TBS, maybe alongside Close Enough when that starts airing, if it ever still ever becomes a thing, you know. And that's another thing. Whatever happened to Close Enough, you know, ugh, never mind. But again, not a good position for Toonami. Probably the worst position, definitely since I've started looking at the, really paid special attention to the goings on the block, and probably the worst position it's been in since 2012 when it finally uh, reemerged and became an adult swim staple. What do you guys think? What's your opinion on this current situation with Tsunami? Do you think they're in dire straits as I do? Do you think that there's light at the end of the tunnel? Leave your opinions down below. I love reading them. If you like this content, if you want more Tsunami anime content, please like and subscribe. I'm Super Orange Cat, and that is all.